All right, well, thanks, everybody, for coming out uh, today to Southwest uh, Louisville. We're, we're celebrating the first new addition to this section of the Louisville Loop in eight years. So thank goodness we're doing this. The Loop just continues to grow. This section, which begins at uh, the fantastic Riverside Barnsley Mormon Landing, extends 2.66 miles. So if you want to calculate that, it's 14,039 feet. So it makes the Ohio River portion of the loop almost 25, 25 miles long from where it begins at the Big Four Bridge, which is really a phenomenal achievement when you start talking about when we started this whole project. And by traveling on this portion of the loop, you get a really interesting sense of our community. You get a lot of diversity. So, of course, we start downtown at the Big Four Bridge, then we start heading west. We go through Portland, then we go through uh, Shawnee and by Chickasaw Parks, then the industrial areas along Campground Road and Cane Run Roads, and then to Riverview Park, and then to Riverside, and now to where we're standing right outside of the Mill Creek Generating Station. So it's probably the most diverse part of the loop in terms of the visual scenery that you see. When you think about what we've done with the loop now, with the seven miles of paved bicycle tra trails, that the folks from 21st Century Parks have added to the loop through the, Porklands, through the Parklands of Floyd's Fork. And then the total of 19 miles that will be at the Parklands will have about 50% of the Louisville Loop completed uh, by next spring, which is a tremendous milestone uh, for the loop. Yes! And then we're going to keep working on this. As everybody knows, this is a 100-mile project. Uh, we've got certain uh, parcels of land under contract. Others we're trying to. Uh, Lisa and the team from Parks have been working tirelessly on this now uh, for years, but we call it kind of the wedding ring of the community, and we are determined uh, to get it finished, and we will keep working on it until it is finished. Now, this particular section of the loop right here, you can see it can be used by anybody. It's a 10-foot wide path, and it's been built in compliance with the Americans with Disability Act, so it is accessible to all. The new trailhead here also has got parking for 26 vehicles, so this is a good spot for people that don't live around here. They can, uh, they can bring their bikes over here in their cars. If that's what they want to do, then go for a great ride. And then within the next few weeks at this trailhead and along this new section, there's going to be a drinking fountain, bike racks, benches, trash receptacles, and sinus, signage showing uh, cyclists how to navigate through the loop. This particular part of the project began back in 2009 through the American Recovery and Investment Act, if you remember that. And we got some help from our friends at KIPTA. Uh, is Larry Cheney here? OK. Yeah. Well, hi. How you doing? Please give our best to KIPTA, OK? You guys help us on so many different things. Uh, and then also the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. Anybody here from the Transportation Cabinet? They're, probably, they're all busy with the big bridge downtown. And then uh, also this. Uh, uh, project had its roots in the prior Metro Council administration. Uh, Bob Henderson initially provided $40,000 in capital funds. So, Bob, you're looking good back there, man. And who's that farmer next to you? Is that Larry Mattingly back there uh, looking relaxed as well? Yes, he did. And he looks 10 years younger right now, I might say. So thanks so much to you guys for uh, starting off the project here so effectively. A key partner on this project, obviously, from where we're standing here today, has been lg and &E, uh, for giving us the ability to both use this property and improve and continue this project. lg and &E steps up for the community all the time, and whether it's a project like this or whether it's Light Up Louisville, and we appreciate everything the team from lg and &E does. So give it up for lg and &E. All right, so uh, if you know anything about what's happening in cycling in the community right now, there's tremendous momentum. So openings like this are greeted really enthusiastically uh, by the whole city. So we're excited about that. We've got a few more speakers, and then we're going to go for a little bike ride after that. All right, so now I'd like to welcome up Sevi Ghosh, who's our Metro Parks Director, and I would like to ask him to tell us a little bit more about this project. Sevi? Morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out. This is great. Uh, good turnout. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, for coming out for the opening. And also a big thank you to all the staff here. Uh, there are quite a few of them that 
and if I miss a few names, please, uh, I do apologize, but uh, as far as the project side of things, uh, Jason Canuel from our parks team, Lisa Height, John Suntoski, uh, Milana, and if I missed anybody, I apologize again, but uh, thank you very much and for being part of the project. This is a great addition to that, so thank you. And then I've spent a lot of my career on, out west in uh, Oregon, and bike riding is a big uh, amenity that's offered through the city. And uh, you know, if you choose to do it, if you, you can go out into the mountains and so on, um, a lot of mountain bike riding and all that. But also the city part of it, and working in Portland, uh, seeing what they did with the bike riding, I'm glad to see a lot of it happening here in Louisville too. And I've heard from a lot of my friends out on the west coast about what good things are happening in Louisville, so this is a great addition. We should take pride in the fact that we are able to soon, hopefully, in the next few years, connect the loop and make, make it a great amenity for the community. So, again, it's a, it's a great project. A uh, couple of other things to mention here. Uh, we have a couple of other projects working with the Army Corps, uh, the st uh, Stream Bank Stabilization Project out by Shawnee, which should be coming online here soon, make the loop more accessible from other parts of the, 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 the city. And also, uh, we'll be hosting a quite a few public meetings in the coming weeks, so please uh, ke keep your eyes and ears out for those uh, so that there is some uh, good uh, community participation in those meetings. And without much more to say here, I think the mayor has said quite a bit here on the project. Uh, if I could welcome Mr. Bowling, I believe, from LGNE to say a few words. Thank you. Good morning. Beautiful morning out here. We miss the rain, so that makes for, makes for a pretty good day. My name is Ralph Bowling. I'm the Vice President of Power Generation at lg &E and KU. So on behalf of all of our employees here at the Mill Creek Station and our entire lg &E workforce, I want to express how proud we are to be a partner in helping making the completion of this end of the loop possible. Our company prides itself on having an extremely active employee base many of whom live in or highly motivated in the communities in which we serve, including here around Mill Creek. But I just want to take a moment, I want to especially recognize Mike Kirkland. Where's Mike? Mike is the general manager here at Mill Creek Station, and he's been key in working with Metro Parks and coordinating our efforts along the way. He's also been essential in working with Metro Parks, also Councilwoman Cindy Fowler and others for a lot of other improvements in the area, including the improvements at Sun Valley Park and our continued partnership with Riverside and the Farm and Farnsley Mormon Landing. So Mike, we certainly appreciate your help in that respect. This new stretch of the Louisville Loop gives us all an opportunity to get out and explore the different parts of our area meet our neighbors, in addition to putting a focus on health and fitness. Those are things that ultimately help strengthen our community and will enhance the quality of life for everyone, everyone in this area. We're extremely proud and happy to be a part of this. We're excited to, that it's opening now for the new area residents to enjoy. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ralph. Thanks, lg and &E. again. Uh, a lot of momentum in the Southwest right now. Uh, Southwest Regional Library is setting records, almost doubling the amount of folks that have been using uh, that. So we're happy to see that amenity really being embraced. Valley High School, obviously, with their new auditorium and gym there, is really setting the, the pace for that as well, the improvements at Sun Valley. So there's a lot going on. We've got a big city, almost 400 square miles. So it's very diverse uh, geographically and demographically. And, it, you can find beautiful things, everything, and certainly this trail is going to add to the southwestern portion of our city. And our councilwoman here that's overseeing all this is Cindy Fowler. So, Cindy, if you'd add a few remarks, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's a great day in southwest Jefferson County. Um, I've been excited about the opening of this um, section of the Louisville Loop for quite some time since I came into office and prior to that. Um, we have seen um, remarkable growth in our in District 14 in Southwest Louisville, um, as the mayor said, with the um, Regional Library, Valley High School, the, the um, Dixie Highway Master Plan Corridor um, um, Project. 
So a lot of the good things are coming out here, and this is just another um, jewel in, in our crown in, in southwest Jefferson County. Um, we, we have partnered with LG&E, and &E and um, I'm so grateful to them for all of the um, support that they have shown with the pavilion and the stage at Sun Valley Park, the walking paths. Um, they are going to step up and um, do new basketball courts at Sun Valley. Uh, tennis courts are starting this week, right, Jason? Yes? Yes. So um, lots of good things coming to Sun Valley Park and uh, Southwest Louisville. Um, we were able to secure $150,000 for the Jefferson Memorial Forest um, at the Siltstones Trail on um, Scotts Gap. That work will start pretty soon um, with the restoration of wetlands. So a lot of good things are coming. The next leg of this will connect us over to silt, the Siltstones. So, um, and I'm, I'm really happy to see the investment and um, this will be a good healthy way for our citizens to get out and enjoy the, um, the river and um, just get some good exercise. So thank you everyone for everything that you've done to make this happen. It has um, been a long, long road. We, we've waited for, um, well, since I, we, we've been trying, we've been told that it was ready to go for three years. So I'm so glad to see it happen. So um, let's go ride our bikes. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to recognize too uh, Andy Murphy here. Murph is the president of the Louisville Bike Club. Uh, we've seen just tremendous uh, growth in membership of the bike club and our new rider clinics as well. So, Andy, if you could share a few thoughts with us on uh, where we're at right now with cycling in the community, some of our new rider clinics coming up, and any other thoughts you have. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I want to touch on something Ralph mentioned earlier that, that this path will be an opportunity for people in this part of the community to enjoy and get out and lead a healthy lifestyle. But another thing this does, Ralph, is bring people from other parts of the community. The Louisville Bicycle Club has a ride every Thursday morning. We bring about 50 people from the uh, the bridge, the Big Four Bridge downtown, out to Farnsley Mormon. Well, now they'll be coming out to here. But we get people from uh, that wouldn't normally be in this part of town, people from Indiana, people from Oldham County that ride with us. So it's really going to be cool. Like the mayor said, it's going to connect the community. It's uh, a really cool event, and it really is an exciting time to be a bicyclist. Uh, our new rider clinic has grown about 50% every year. It's just incredible the, the amount of people that haven't been on a bike in 20 years that want to get out and ride. Uh, we had 155 people graduate our League of American Bicyclists class this year, which just exceeded all of our, all of our uh, expectations. We've got so many exciting things going on. We've got Mayor Fisher has ridden with us once a month for the last six months, I think it is, five, six months, uh, which has been incredible. On one of the rides, we had 250 people show up. We've got the Cycluvia going on uh, in a couple of weeks. We've got just so many exciting opportunities, and this just uh, broadens our opportunities having this path out here. So, Ralph, I want to thank the folks at LG&E, Councilman Fowler, thank you, Metro Parks, Mayor Fisher, thank you. You are the dog, dog. All right, Murph is the man. Uh, he did mention the Cycluvia, so that's this Sunday on Bardstown Road, I think from 2 to 6, is that right? 2 to 6. So if you haven't been out to Cycluvia before, it's fantastic. We shut down Bardstown Road for about three miles and just turn it into one uh, long uh, horizontal park. So come and check that out. Okay, with that, we'll be happy to take any questions. Well, it, no. Uh, because uh, it require, it, it's based on funding and land access. Now here's an opportunity where you can see the power of us having the local option sales tax. Okay, our funding, our remaining funding leads to, to acquire all the land for the loop is in the neighborhood of 60 to 80 million dollars. Does that sound right? Well, there's funding and the construction. So funding and constructions, let's call it 75 million dollars. Uh, we will piece that together over the next decade or two if we keep going as we are. With the local option sales tax, if the citizens had the right to vote on it and wanted to vote on it, we could raise the money to complete the whole Louisville Loop in six months and pull our whole community together, increase land values along the way, and be a real magnet for attraction to the city as well. 
So I just bring that up because we're getting ready to go back into the legislative session again. We need to have that right as citizens so we can accelerate projects like this that enhance quality of life and property values and help create jobs by economic development. So thanks for, thanks for setting that up for me. Okay. Anything else? Next part of the loop uh, will be in the parklands of Floyd's Fork, I assume, right? It's opening on Friday. Opening on Friday. Do you want to come up and tell us about that? Actually, the Turkey Run Park section will be open on, fri on th this coming Friday, the 16th. Uh, it's, I think it officially opens at 10.30 in the morning. People have already been using that section, so you can actually ride through there. So. Anything else about parks or this path? Okay, go ahead. Well, we're really proud of Anthony Smith. Uh, he's the founding director of our Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods. Our program is recognized in the as the best in the country. It's, it's a long journey to make every neighborhood safe and healthy. We know that. Uh, but when he had the opportunity to go and be the founding national director of Cities United in D.C., I mean, what a great opportunity for him. So we're proud of him for that. Now, if you noticed, about two weeks ago, we named Yvette Gentry as chief of our community building. So Yvette has a long history of public safety and work in safe and healthy neighborhoods. So she'll be overseeing the new hiring, the hiring of the new uh, person that'll come in. And we anticipate that'll happen you know, over the next month or two. We've got a good strong bench in that area. The work will continue, obviously. So it's a setback losing Anthony, but he's going to continue to work with us from his national position as well. So we're proud of him. We wish he wasn't going, but it's good for the country, and ultimately it'll be good for the city as well. Well, every, it's, it is very important. I mean, when you take a look at violence in cities across the country right now, it's a real, it, there's a real uptake in almost every city across the country right now in homicides, what you're seeing. So we're certainly seeing that here in Louisville. We're up about 40% uh, year over year, and there's a couple things. One is, you know, from the police standpoint, we're putting more resources geographically where crime has taken place. Our federal partnerships with the FBI, the DA, the ATF are strong as well. Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods, as I said, has got a good program. And the last and probably the most important element to that is our citizens. About 50, 50, about 50 percent of our homicides this year are not solved. Somebody knows who committed those. And frequently those folks that are not caught yet, they may commit another homicide. So the 574 LMPD line is never more important. Uh, people can call that anonymously and, and help us solve uh, these crimes. So my point is, it takes everybody to create a safe city, and we're going to keep at it. I mean, obviously, there's no choice, and in some instances, we're not going to see the results of our work for a couple of years, but it's the most critical thing for our city. Yes, sir. Well, that's a great idea. Um, I don't know if anybody's working on that or, uh, you know, we've got more than enough to do right now inside Jefferson County, but there are some statewide bike paths. I'm not as knowledgeable about them as I should be. Lisa, do you have a... Okay, we're going to take a little bike ride. I guess we're, are we going to cut a ribbon first? All right. This has been a Metro TV production, a public service of Louisville Metro Government.